One of the most common requests received by our prayer center is for physical healing. Well, today you'll hear a testimony of a vibrant young woman who fell deathly ill with a rare disease that takes one in four people. Shayla Visser of Alpha Canada will share how she received her notable miracle of healing. <laughs> Stay tuned because we're going to be praying for your healing later in the program. Welcome to the program today. Glad you've tuned in. And uh, Joan, I think uh, we need to remind viewers that the prayer center is open. Yes. Take prayer lines. It's going to be a busy program mm -hmm. with, in uh, regard to the number of calls. Well, because we in. want you to call in with your prayer requests, especially for healing, because Jill's going to join us. Jill is our prayer center coordinator, and right. she's going to join us at the uh, in the latter half of this program, and we're so, going to be praying for your requests. Yeah. So today we are going to go to an interview that we did a little while ago with Shayla Visser. Now, she's the national director for Alpha Canada, which is an amazing story in itself. But she yeah. has, when she was with us that time, she's shared with us this amazing story uh -huh. of healing and that is I was amazed at the condition that she had yeah. and how severe it was how very few really recover from it and how God healed her it's just really a, a very young, inspirational story absolutely a young woman yep. uh, mother of small children yeah husband young family and she just fell um fell well, sick it, with this uh, it's a very unique disease yeah it's not very common at all no so uh, but it was really debilitating so we're going to go to this uh this is uh shayla visser she shares really really well doesn't yeah, she on she this does. and uh her testimony is going to encourage you because it shows you that god can heal in all kinds of various ways you know and not always in the agenda that you yeah. think or the <laughs> timeline that you think but god is always in the business of healing when Amen. you trust him so he let's is. go to shayla right now with us today is Shayla Visser from, well, the Lower Mainland, I guess, isn't yep. it? Yeah, in yeah. British Columbia, and also you're the Canadian Director for Alpha Canada. I am. Welcome. Welcome to the program. Thank you. We have talked to you before about Alpha and all mm -hmm. of that. What a wonderful program it is, but you have a personal story we want to hear. Yeah, it was uh, four years ago that I was starting to have headaches. And I'm not a headache person, so I was slightly annoyed by this because they were every day. Mm. And uh, so I went to my doctor and I said, you know, Advil isn't working, Tylenol's not working, what is this? And we had thought maybe I had pulled a muscle because I work out quite strenuously. And, mm. But not, it was continually um, getting worse. And so I was at, during the second week, calling my GP every morning for a check-in. Just, he just wanted to know, how are you doing? And we couldn't figure out what it was. Mm. And so two weeks in, my husband um, decided we should go to the hospital. And uh, I had been quite ill in the night from the pain and had been a bit delirious, in fact. Mm -hmm. But That's I didn't want to bother him. Then, yeah, it was getting extreme. And so yeah. we went into the hospital. He drove me to the closest one, which, although we live in Vancouver, was in Richmond. And uh, we ended up in the hospital, and they tried a lot of different things. And, mm -hmm. and they found out that I either had one of two things, meningitis or TB. Mm. And given that I had not been to countries where there was TB, mm -hmm. and uh, given that um, meningitis was the most probable thing, they put me in isolation immediately. Right. And I was in isolation for four days mm. because they couldn't really narrow it down. It wasn't coming back as bacterial or viral. And I remember the day that um, the doctor came rushing in and uh, he, he kicked out my mom, who had flown out from Ontario already, and my husband. And I said, I'm happy for them to hear what you want to tell me. Right. Yeah. And he said, no, I have to actually talk to you in private. So they're watching through the glass as I'm being told by um, a specialist that I have something called Cryptococcus gatii, which is a really fancy way of saying fungal meningitis. Mm. And that fungal meningitis is very, very rare. And people that get it mm. are usually HIV positive. And did I have HIV? Wow. And I, of course, said no, because I didn't believe I did. Have you had blood transfusions? Are you sleeping around on your husband? Is he sleeping <laughs> around on you? What's your drug history? And he and I are pretty squeaky clean people. And so none of that was true. Of course, he didn't believe me. Uh, he didn't believe that perhaps that was, you know, that my husband was as squeaky clean as he was. And so they had to test me to see if I had HIV. It came mm. back, I did not. And so then it became even rarer that someone who's healthy and active and would get this disease. And uh, the worst part was they said, is that not only is this disease um, take the life of one in four, mm -hmm. 
mm. very quickly after getting this disease, but the drugs are as bad as the disease itself. Mm. And they said, you know, we have to keep you in the hospital for eight weeks, which you know in the Canadian medical system, if they're keeping you longer than two nights, yes. you're, you're really sick. Wrong. You're really sick. But when they announced to you <laughs> eight weeks, you I got to ask the classic question because here you are, a healthy person, and all of a sudden you're hearing probably one of the worst prognoses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like something so unusual too. Yeah. What's going on in your mind? What do you say? I think I was point? in shock. Yeah. When my mom and husband described my face as the doctor speaking to me, they just said, we watched your face crumble. Yeah. And I was in such shock because I had headaches and I knew I didn't feel well, but yeah. what on earth? Because part of this fungal meningitis is you have a fungal ball in your brain. Mine oh. happened to be at the base of my brain. It was 1.3 centimeters. Oh. And if it reached three centimeters and it multiplied daily, oh. if it reached three centimeters, they would have to actually surgically remove it. And that's, of course, worst case scenario. The other yeah. issue they were worried about was that if my brain sw was swollen too much, they'd have to put a shunt into my brain. So, you know, they're telling you all these things and yeah. it's barely registering because you are in shock. I remember the first three nights. Um, I'm always a glass half full. Even when bad things happen, I'm a glass half full personality. And that's my perspective on life. But my physical body was having a response internally that was way outside of what I would say is normal. And so I would be trying to be positive, but sleep through most of the days. Then at night, after they'd given me this terrible, terrible drug, I had to take an antifungal, uh, I would wake up a couple hours later and just be shaking. And it was the strangest thing, and I realized it was panic attacks. And I'd never had a panic attack, so I didn't know what it was at first. The nurse had to tell me. They had to bring warm blankets and, you know, rub your forehead and rub your hands to calm you down because mm. you're literally shaking. Mm -hmm. And on the third night of having this panic attack, I just said, Jesus, please tell me, is this my time to go? Like, I'll prepare. Like, just yeah. can I know? Because some right. of it was you would go to sleep at night and not know if you'd wake up or not mm -hmm. or not know if you'd wake up with a brain shunt or mm -hmm. there was just so many scenarios, none of them good that I was really obviously deeply worried in my physical body and in my uh, psyche. Yeah. And the third night when I asked Jesus if it was my time to go, and I felt very clearly he said no. <laughs> now, I remember telling my husband the next day, Jesus told me I'm not going to die of this. And my husband thinking, honey, you're on a lot of drugs right now. There's a lot of voices you might be hearing. And my husband's a Christian, but it was just that sense of really, yeah. like, yeah. I mean, we love God. We love Jesus. We believe for miracles. but. That's nice. Believe for the best, prepare for the worst. Right? Exactly, exactly. And he, I think, he, truthfully, he was preparing for the worst because... He's bracing himself. Yeah, and think. truthfully, most people that get this disease mm. have debilitating after effects even when they finish the medication. Yeah. From the medication. Because the medication is deadly, mm -hmm. deadly. Yeah, it Amazing. was quite the journey for wow. that part. So what happened now? You're, yeah. You had to take the drugs and... I don't remember a lot of the first three weeks. I actually think it was harder on my husband who, you know, ended up with a back problem <laughs> for the first few weeks after I was out of the hospital because he'd sat so many hours beside me in yeah. a hospital uh, room. But I, you know, it was just up and down for a number of weeks. And mm -hmm. about uh, three weeks in, I started to have more waking hours than sleeping hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the fifth week, five and a half weeks into it, I was starting to get stronger. I could actually walk around my floor versus just staying in bed because I was attached to an IV pole 24 hours a day because of the damage it could do to your kidney and liver I had to be have have um, uh, pick line bringing in solution and water into my body all the time, all the time. to just That's keep what flushing Joan it. Had, right? mm -hmm. yeah we had pick talked line. about that we both had this pick line which is not fun, not fun. slightly <laughs> terrifying it goes for viewers that don't understand a pick line they come in through a vein in your arm yeah. and it stays in there and it goes oh, all the way into a pool of blood of at the top of your heart and yeah. so when they put drugs into your body it is immediately in your system flush. now there's something yeah. beautiful about that when you're in pain because it goes quickly into your system <laughs> but it is a very strange thing to have a little yeah. plastic tube into your heart yeah. Yeah. Um, right. but uh, so about five and a half weeks in I was starting to get stronger but still feeling quite miserable on any given day when my pastor came to visit me and I go to a wonderful church love the people in my church and this was the first time my pastor was coming to see me I wasn't allowed visitors while mm -hmm. I was in the hospital because they were so worried about my sure. health yeah. and so he showed up five and a half weeks into it and brought communion mm -hmm. to us and so we had communion with him and then he said to me uh, I'd like to pray for healing and I'd known my church had been praying for healing friends yeah. around the world had been praying for healing I was I felt like the most prayed for person yeah. but he said something that I've never heard from him before 
and he said, I'd, I think God may want to heal you. Hmm. And I remember thinking, really? <laughs> no, not possible. I'm on the road to recovery. I'll be fine. Yeah, um, right. But it did leave a little niggle in my head of, would God want to heal me? Was it Easter weekend? Is it was it? Good Friday. Good Friday. So five and a half oh weeks in, it was Good Friday. It was Easter weekend. Great time for a miracle. Hey? Great time for a miracle. <laughs> I think one of the reasons that I really questioned, would God heal me, is not even a year and a half before that, my best friend had had breast cancer. Mm. It had returned back and she had died leaving behind a very distraught husband, yeah. a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. Wow. And so I had walked that journey of believing for healing, praying yeah. for healing, and yeah. then watching my best friend die in front right. of me. Yeah. So, you know, when my pastor's saying to me, I want to pray for a miracle, and I think maybe God wants to heal you, kind of, he's British, so hedging his bets a bit. Yeah. Uh, and he just said, I'd like to pray for this. And I thought, huh, is mm. this even possible for me? Mm -hmm. Would God do this for me? And if so, why didn't he do it for her? Exactly. Yeah. And so he prayed for me and, you know, I, I, the doctors were around, but I was going on the following Tuesday for an MRI. Mm. And that was a checkup on this fungal ball to see, right. was had it stopped multiplying? Was it shrinking? Were they killing it? Because that would tell them how much longer I had to be in the hospital. Yeah. And uh, I remember going into the MRI machine. And for those who have been in, you know, it's quite... It's, it's quite compact. It, you feel a bit claustrophobic <laughs> going in. Been there. And I remember going in and thinking, just as they're, the machine's pushing me back into the MRI machine, thinking, I wonder if God healed me. And you know what my thought is? Nah, yeah. <laughs> probably not. And the next day, the, oh. my um, infectious diseases specialist yeah. um, comes into the room and he said, so has anyone told you the results of your MRI? I said, no, we haven't heard yet. My husband's sitting beside me. Okay. And he said, well, it's gone. I said, what's gone? He said, your fungal ball has completely disappeared. Wow. I said, what? He said, well, when the drugs have worked, you're still left with a scar on your brain where that fungal ball existed. Yeah. He said, that's not there either. It's, he, literally, he said, it's as it's if gone. it never existed. Isn't that amazing? That's my how Jesus husband, does it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. My husband fell into my arms weeping and oh, like laughing my. and I was laughing and crying. I mean, my doctor was thrilled. He, I don't believe, has any sort of Christian faith, yeah. nor would he have called it a miracle. Yeah. But he did say, I don't know what's happened. Yeah. Yeah. And, amazing. and he said, you can go home today. So here we were just waiting to see if I'd stay the full eight weeks. Would it be seven? Would it be nine? And yeah. instead, five and a half weeks in, he's saying, you can go home. You know, the shock of this whole story <laughs> is that you plunged into this crisis. Yeah. And you came out in the same way. It was like <laughs> so know, suddenly. Baptism by fire yeah. and on both ends. And so it was an amazing faith journey for me wow. yeah. to be the recipient of healing. I've prayed many times for people to be healed. It's a whole different thing yeah. being do you think the one who do you was think healed. Do you think it's increased yeah. your faith to believe for people to be healed? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Changed I'll pray for anyone memory. to be healed. <laughs> oh, that's and great. that's been four years? <laughs> yes. And you're yeah. obviously. I'm in great health. Praise that's, God. Wow. That's phenomenal. Yeah, what and, a, what and, a you know, wonderful, there's, wonderful testimony. There's a simple answer to, does Jesus heal today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you're uh, telling us, I didn't know about this disease, but what I know from what you said is that in the natural, there's just no way this could have been the outcome. Should have yeah. been something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're just very thankful to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> so now when you read by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. It's past tense. Yeah. yeah. It is available to us. That's amazing. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing Thank that with us. Thank you for sharing that. inviting well, me on your I'm show. I'm sure it's going to encourage a lot. We're going to come back in a few moments, and we're going to pray for you. Yeah. Dick and Joan have a passion to see the spiritual climate of Canada changed and to have our nation rise to her prophetic destiny. To get this done, we need your help and generous support. So we ask you to prayerfully consider helping us reach the nation with a monthly partnership of any amount. When you partner with us, we will send you a brand new audio message by Dick DeWert called The Apostolic Call. It's a message that will move you beyond status quo and equip you with a passion for revival and global harvest. With your support, we can continue to reach the nation through television and other media. Thank you for your financial partnership with Lifeline today. For more info, go to dickandjoan.com or call 403-942-0123. Yeah, we want to thank you for your partnership. Uh, we are really, really 
excited about what God is doing, Joan, you know, with uh, expansion on Daystar Television, of course, uh -huh. but also just what we're doing right now with our building and so forth. We're yeah. just really, really excited about the future. Yes, There's going to be are. some great things coming. So really great interview with Shayla. It was. And, uh, you know, we just have to chuckle a little bit about that whole scenario. <laughs> she was the one going through the whole process saying, will God actually heal me? Does he want to heal me? And then thinking, nah, I don't think maybe, so. Maybe but you did comment on that and said, you know, you felt that it was the prayers of so many people. Yeah. It wasn't just the prayers of, of her family or whatever, I, but so many people across the nation were praying for I her. I think that's good for many of our viewers to hear <laughs> that, um, that sometimes you think, well, I don't have the faith. But, yeah. you know, and that's possibly true with any individual. But then when God sees the faith of many joined together, yeah. their little mustard seed of faith, it is enough. It's, yeah. it's as if that's sufficient. On, you, the, on the program as well today with us is Jill yes. Mattis, and she's our prayer center coordinator. Welcome, Jill. Thank you for having Good to have you here. I was just going to say that's a good reason why people need to call into the prayer center, because when they do, they have so many more people yeah. praying well, for them. Exactly. That's what you just said, Dick. Um, you, know, you might have just a little tiny bit of faith, yeah. But you put that together with the little bit of faith of each one of the intercessors, <clears throat> yeah. pretty soon you've got big, strong faith yes, that really right. can bring forth miracles. I, I want to yeah. encourage people right now, the numbers <laughs> on the screen, our prayer center tends to get really busy. Yeah. And so the best thing to do is when the program comes on, start calling if you yeah. have a prayer request. Yeah. And uh, something else, Jill, we should let our viewers know, and that is that when they call in and they get prayed for when they call in, yes. that's not where it stops, does it? Oh, absolutely. Um, every Friday morning, we have a, a fairly good-sized group of intercessors, men and women, that come in, and we pray over every individual person right. whose name, <coughs> excuse me, whose name and na a need we have been given. Mm -hmm. And it's not just laying them out on the table and pl praying collectively. Right. It's yeah. John. It's Mary. Yeah. And this is the need, Lord. And we join together, and sometimes there'll be a word of knowledge even, or a scripture wow. that will come to the different intercessors, uh -huh. and we'll pray that over the person who has called in, or someone has called on their behalf. Yeah. We have an area set aside in our offices, <coughs> and it's dedicated to the use of the prayer center. It's yes. a fairly large room. There's your, your phones are there, but also there's tables yeah. and chairs, yeah. and people uh, gather around them, and they pray over yeah. the prayer center. You know, one of the <laughs> comments we hear often from our viewers is, of all the television ministries, we have never seen our prayer requests so thoroughly covered and yeah. prayed for yeah. and with individual attention, uh, yeah. and which I think is amazing. Yeah. It's a uh, total credit to you, Jill. Joan and I <laughs> don't do that, so it's, it's completely well, you and your team. It's a great privilege. It really is, and all of the intercessors feel that. Yeah. I was going to mention, too, that some people send in photographs. Yeah. So we have photographs on our bulletin oh, board, I've seen and them. we'll lay Wonderful. hands on the pictures. And, yeah. um, you know, and then when we're, they're done pray, being prayed for... <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> individually, um, they go in the prayer box. Yeah. And then that prayer box gets opened up mm. right in the middle of this prayer circle Friday morning. And then we pray over them again. And we pray over the <laughs> pictures. And we, so you do get soaked in prayer when you call yeah. the Lifeline Today now, you Prayer know, Center. Some people might be thinking, well, that's all right to do that. You probably don't have that many prayer requests. Oh, but boy. that's not true, <laughs> is it? Yeah, we do full. have a lot of prayer requests. Yeah. And we have been every very, one of them gets the attention that they need. We've been very, very busy, particularly since we've been on Daystar. Um, sometimes we're in the prayer center for two hours, and it's only a half-hour program. Yeah. yeah. But so we can't leave. Quite a bit afterwards. So I want to encourage people. You know, if if uh, if it's past the time, if the program's yeah. over, don't give up. You can still call because <laughs> yeah. we don't just leave. Leave you hanging. We hang around, yeah. and we're there to take your call. And, and then, if not, you can leave a message. Yeah. Right. And then when I come back into the office the next day. I'll give you a call back. Mm -hmm. So I want to emphasize something again. What makes mm -hmm. ministry on television like this and the prayer center so unique <laughs> yeah. is that it's the combined prayer of many people. Yes. Yes. It's focusing a lot of people praying for your need at that yeah, time. Right. And, and uh, I know a lot of people too will call a lot of prayer ministries, which is awesome, really. Mm -hmm. That's great. You can get more people praying for you. Sure. But uh, I think that's a wonderful idea. But just so that people understand why that has such an impact. And uh, again, I think w w the feedback that we get is that we don't know of any other television ministry that does this kind of thorough 
covering of prayer. And you then know, follow, and follow up. up. And follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you call back or others call back. Yeah, we do call them back. And that's good because we get an update. And that's mm -hmm. what we call for. What has God done? And sometimes this is when you hear the praise reports, you right. hear the miracles. <laughs> and other times they say, well, you know, there's this development. Well, then we take it back to the intercessors yeah. and you get prayed for again. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and uh, Joan and I receive reports from you regularly and mm -hmm. often we'll hear so-and-so called today and receive Jesus as their Savior. Oh. And this is happening quite frequently. I have one right here, a woman called for prayer. She didn't uh, understand really what it means to be a Christian, so the telephone prayer partner was able to lead her to Jesus yeah. and that is the greatest miracle of all, it is. isn't it? And, and you know, the sweetest thing out of that call was um, I asked this lady if she wanted to give her life to Jesus after I'd explained to her the yeah. salvation message. And she said, well, you know, I don't think so because I would hurt Jesus. I would let him down. Oh my. And I was able to tell her, you know, wow. we all let him down. Yeah. yeah. We all do. <laughs> he made up the difference. That's the he, point. But he's always there to forgive. Yeah. He's a God of great love and mercy. And she did end up oh, praying the sinner's wow. prayer. That's we wonderful. sent her a, a, a package, a new believer's package, and mm -hmm. we'll keep a, a track with her too. Yeah. Something else that uh, Shayla said uh, that she shared uh, that her pastor came in. Yes. to share communion with her. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup yeah. of communion, you, do, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Well, the proclaiming the Lord's death means that He, once and for all, yeah. had the victory over sin, sickness, mm -hmm. and death. He did. And so I thought, this is great to hear her say, receiving communion, the pastor then said, I really believe God wants to heal you. They share communion together. You know, you can do that at home. <laughs> Remember, Joan, when you went through cancer? Yes. A few years ago, which, by the way, Joan is a miracle. <laughs> yes, she, she is. She is a miracle. So I am. The kind of cancer she had was so aggressive that it's a 70% mortality rate. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very serious type, but she's free and healed. But one of the things we did is we had these portable communion cups, right? Yeah. And uh, it happened many times a day, some days. Some days it happened more than two or three times. Yeah. Because we just felt, well, the Bible does say as, as many times, as. as often as you do this, yeah. you uh, put, put yourselves in remembrance of what I did. And we needed to do that. And any bread or cracker and juice <laughs> will serve the purpose. You know, it's, it's the uh, elements are certainly representations of yeah. what happened, the body and, and the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. But we do encourage you that you could do as well mm -hmm. and, uh, and pray for it. That is part of the healing covenant. Yes. The, the elements are really not mysterious in themselves. It's just that they <laughs> represent and something so great. And when we do that, we honor Christ and we honor our faith in His, yeah. his uh, sacrifice for us. And that alone releases healing in the heavenly realm. So, you know, something else people need to know is that there's multiple types of healing. There's, mm -hmm. there's healing that's progressive. That's a gift of God. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's in a response to prayer. There's instantaneous healing. That's a mir miracle. Yeah. And we don't know how God will answer a prayer, <laughs> do we? That's no. right. I mean, sometimes it'll be the progressive. Sometimes it'll be instant. Sometimes it'll go on for a while and then suddenly disappear. We don't know. Yeah. But either way, we trust God in the process. Absolutely. You know, Dick, um, just last fall, we did a course on healing. Yeah. Um, and one scripture that really jumped out at us uh, when we were studying this was from Jeremiah 8.22. And I'm reading it from the Amplified Bible <clears throat> where it says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Mm. Is there no physician there? Why is not the health of my people restored? Mm. And a lot of people are asking why. Because although we do see miracles, obviously, like you, like Shayla, mm -hmm. and like many others, we would like to see more. Mm -hmm. And we've been crying out in our Friday morning prayer meetings for our, a healing revival. But the interesting thing with this scripture is it gives the answer to that question. It says, why is not the health of my people restored? And then it says, because. Are you ready to hear the because? Yeah. Because Zion, or God's people, no longer enjoyed the presence of the great physician. Oh, mm. wow. They never, no longer enjoyed the presence of the great physician. And I believe this is one thing that God is saying to us today. Seek my presence. That's right. Before and above everything else mm -hmm. because he is 
the great physician. Mm -hmm. I, he is healer. Yeah, that's right. That's him. He, he exudes healing. You know, Jill, that's one of the words that the Lord gave me personally yes. for 2017 yeah. when I've been praying and asking God, like, what, where do you want us to go in prayer? And, what, and I hear the Lord say, seek my presence, yes. seek my face, <clears throat> because everything else comes out of that. Absolutely. One of the things you know. that I was saying as well is that if you make the Lord a pri high priority in your yeah. life, he's supposed to be your first priority <laughs> in your life. Yeah. And, uh, and then you can expect all those benefits. You know, yeah. Psalm 103, you know, who uh, gives us all these benefits. He's one, yeah. you know, heals us mm -hmm. of all our diseases. But too often we put the Lord in a p place where we go to him like the fire extinguisher. When there's an emergency, we grab him but, and go to him. But otherwise, we kind of just go on with our lives. Yeah. And so it's important to remember that our priorities need to be right if we're going to consistently receive the benefits of, of his presence. And one of the things people need to remember is that you need to seek his face, not his hand. Yes. Yes. You know what That's that right. means? It means that you healer. seek him for who he is, not just the gifts for that he has. Because he, he can give you a lot, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but you don't want to seek him just for the gift. You want to seek him for, he's the giver. You want to seek the giver of the gift. And uh, yeah. that's the same way with the relationship of husband and wife. If I give you a ring, it's not the ring that's the issue. <laughs> well, a little bit it is. <laughs> and but, I don't love you because you <laughs> might give me a ring. <laughs> well, that's awesome to hear, dear. But you we know only what? have we a couple pray. minutes yeah, left. We, we need to pray. pray for our viewers. And uh, you know what? Let, let your heart be encouraged this, mm -hmm. this uh, day. You know, God is here. And, and there's no time or distance in the spirit realm. And you can receive from him today, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pray that prayer for mm -hmm. you. Lord, I lift up our mm -hmm. viewers today, especially those who are in need of healing, those who are, who are really struggling. And I just heard someone, there's someone watching this program. It's not you, but your heart is broken for somebody else. Wow. And you're watching this program, and you're saying, oh, God, heal this other person. Yeah. Somehow this has so deeply affected you. I hear <coughs> the cry of your heart, and the mm -hmm. Lord is going to answer you. So I just mm -hmm. pray that over you. Heard I that just you. as I'm praying. Lord, we lift up the others who are... Uh, on this program, watching this program, let your grace touch everyone at yes, home. Lord. Be encouraged in your, in your strength and in your Thank faithfulness, you. yes, we Lord. pray in the name of Jesus. Now we speak the blood and the stripes yes. of Christ Amen. for healing over every person, Amen. body, soul, and spirit in Amen. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So Amen. if you have something that you want to share with us, call the prayer center. And uh, they'll be happy to take your call. Amen. Right? Some uh, prayer requests, just an example. Here, a lady suffering from diabetes, no energy. This is just a few of the calls that come in. Man with problems with teeth, gums, and stomach has a very difficult time eating. 44 year old man having surgery for a tumor to be removed. A woman in Ontario, excruciating pain in her legs, facing vascular surgery. A woman with, um, what is that? Uh, in the hospital was, oh yeah. A uh, motor vehicle accident. Accident, MPA. yeah. <laughs> Severe neck injuries, yeah. These are yeah. just some of the examples. Yeah. These Thank are you. the most difficult but, ones that we get. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. Ahead. Thank you, Jill, for being on the program. God bless <laughs> Sorry, you for we being a part of, of the program. I have to cut you off here. But remember this, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. Yeah, bless you. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.